Hello, my name is Matt Eisner. I'm a developer at DQ Systems, and I've helped a number of our customers' development teams learn how to code and test for accessibility. One of the very first questions I'm asked by developers who are new to accessibility is, how do I set up my screen reader? In this tutorial, I will show you how to download, install, and configure a screen reader called NVDA on Windows. We'll also discuss a few of the basic concepts you'll need to understand about NVDA in order to get started testing with it. Finally, we'll fix a very basic accessibility issue and validate our work using NVDA. Let's get started. Okay, before I show you how to download and install NVDA, I'd like to explain why we're choosing it at all for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh, there are a few reasons for this. First of all, it is free. Second of all, it has good support, uh, if not the best support of all existing screen readers for the accessibility APIs that are out there. And third, uh, polling suggests that NVDA's usage is on the rise. Uh, there was a poll conducted by WebAIM in 2014 of screen reader users that speaks to this fact. So for all these reasons, DQ likes to suggest using NVDA as a launch point for your screen reader testing. So here we are on NV Access's homepage. This is the easiest way to find and install NVDA. We'll click the download link, and on the download page, you'll notice there's a section labeled Donation Options. Since NVDA is free, you may consider making a donation to help them continue to develop the product, uh, but you can choose to skip the donation if you wish. You will, however, be required to provide an email address in order to download NVDA. So once you provide your email address and click download, the download will begin. You can install NVDA just like any other application on your Windows machine. And I want to emphasize here that NVDA is for Windows only. So that's what we're going to be using for the purposes of this tutorial. Assuming you've successfully downloaded and installed NVDA, you're now ready to begin using it. I'm going to switch us to another tab in my browser that contains some sample content I've prepared for testing purposes. Now to launch NVDA, just like any other Windows application, I suggest simply hitting the Windows key and typing the name of the application. And when I hit enter to launch NVDA, you'll notice that it's going to immediately start to read the contents of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to turn speech mode off right now. A lot of sighted developers um, are a little off put by the screen reader's output and prefer to mute their system sound so that they don't have to hear and see the text on the screen simultaneously. And that's perfectly reasonable. There is a way to visualize the screen reader output so we can get around that and not have to hear it as sighted developers, and, but still see what the screen reader is doing so we can verify that it's working properly. To do so, there is a taskbar icon showing us that MVDA is running down here in my taskbar. And by right clicking on that icon, I have a context menu with some options. One of those options is a tools menu. And in the tools menu is a speech viewer. Now when I click speech viewer, I get this additional window that's always guaranteed to be on the top of whatever uh, other windows are open in my operating system and I can resize this as appropriate. So now I have a way to visualize the output of the screen reader and when I go back to the page beneath and start to navigate around I can see but not hear the output of my screen reader. Okay, I've closed the speech viewer window for just a moment so I can show you yet another feature of NVDA that's especially helpful for sighted developers using the tool to do screen reader testing. And that is an add-on called Focus Highlight. So in order to install this add-on, we'll go back to the system tray icon like before, find the tools subsection in the context menu, and find the option labeled Manage Add-ons. When we click that, we get an add-ons manager window. And in that window, you'll see that I already have a couple of add-ons installed, but you won't, having just installed NVDA for the first time. Instead, you'll find the button labeled Get Add-ons, click it, and you'll be redirected to the Community Add-ons website for NVDA, listing all the available add-ons that you can install. So we'll scroll down the list, we'll find Focus Highlight, 
click it, and on the Focus Highlight page, we see that there's a link labeled Download Stable Version. When I click that link, I'll be prompted to download and install the Focus Highlight add-on for NVDA. And the prompts will actually automatically restart NVDA and enable the add-on when NVDA restarts. So it's very straightforward, and at the end of the process, you will have NVDA running again, and this time the, the Focus Highlight add-on will be enabled automatically. So what the Focus Highlight add-on does is allows me to visualize a couple things that other, otherwise would be impossible to see. As I navigate around the page's focusable elements using Tab and Shift Tab like this, I can see that red highlight, that red box showing me exactly where my document's active element currently is. Now, in addition to that, if I use the arrow keys to navigate NVDA's text cursor around to read text content, that is content that is not focusable, I can see using this green box where the cursor currently is. So those two pieces of information are conveyed to me simultaneously. This is very helpful as a sighted developer so that I can verify that I'm interacting with the elements that I think I am. The next topic I'd like to discuss is the fact that NVDA has two distinct modes. And it's important as a developer to understand something of the distinction between these two modes. These two modes are browse mode and focus mode. And it's a complicated subject, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we want to get you up and running as quickly as possible, so we're just going to think about it in the most basic terms. In browse mode, most of the keys on the keyboard have special significance for NVDA. So for instance, as I'm on the page and I'm in browse mode and I hit H, you'll see, thanks to the green highlight provided by the focus highlight add-on, that I'm navigating the page heading by heading. That's something I can do in browse mode only. In focus mode, pressing H would simply send an H key press through to the page. So for instance, if you think about the implications, if I were focusing an input field, a text type input field, and I was in focus mode, and I hit the H key, it would type H in the text input. If I'm in browse mode, on the other hand, and I'm focusing a text type input, and hit H, it'll navigate my screen reader to the next heading on the page. So knowing that in browse mode most of the keys you press are going to control the screen reader in some way and that in focus mode most of the keys you press are going to pass through to the page and be handled by whatever scripting the developers have put in place on that page is important to understanding how the screen reader is going to be acting when you start to press keys. NVDA, like most other screen readers, has a lot of keyboard commands. Don't let this intimidate you. As a new user, you're not going to need most of the commands available to you. Uh, you can actually make do some very impactful screen reader testing with just a handful of very simple commands for NVDA. So to get started, I recommend that you search online for DQ University, DQ spelled as you see here, uh, NVDA keyboard commands and find this PDF. This is a nice cheat sheet, a night re nice reference guide for a lot of the most common keyboard commands that you're going to need to get around using NVDA. Now you'll notice on that cheat sheet and lots of others that you may come across, they are going to make reference to a key called the NVDA key. The NVDA key by default is insert and what it does is you, ho you hold it down as a modifier key in conjunction with other keystrokes to perform keyboard commands in NVDA. Since insert is often in different places on different keyboards and it's difficult to hold down in conjunction with other keys because of its location, I suggest that you change the first thing you do, well maybe not the first thing, but one of the first things you do as a developer installing NVDA is to change the NVDA key from insert to caps lock. To do so, right click the system tray icon like we've done before, find preferences and keyboard settings. The very first checkbox is labeled use caps lock as NVDA modifier key. You'll want to check that and click OK. And now caps lock is your NVDA key. So when you find those reference guides for keyboard commands and they say press NVDA plus this other key, your NVDA key now is caps lock. 
We talked previously about how NVDA has two distinct modes, browse mode and focus mode. Now I can guarantee that as a developer using NVDA to conduct screen reader testing, you're going to find yourself in a position where you need to manually toggle between those two modes very regularly. The keyboard command to do that is NVDA plus spacebar. Now NVDA, remember we changed from insert to caps lock, so caps lock is now our NVDA key. Therefore, caps lock plus spacebar is the keyboard command to switch between focus and browse modes. I'm going to turn speech mode back on so that you can hear what it sounds like when I toggle between the two modes. Alright, that high pitched beep sound is focus mode. The lower pitched boop sound is browse mode. Now, you can get used to those sounds, but there's a way to actually replace those sound indicators for the modes with a spoken indication of which mode you're in. The way to do that is to, once again, go to the system tray icon for NVDA, find preferences, and browse mode. Toward the bottom, there's a checkbox labeled audio indication of focus and browse modes. That's checked by default, but if you uncheck it, you lose the audio indications, meaning you lose the beep and the boop sounds, but what you get in return, or in exchange rather, are the words browse and focus spoken to you. So if I uncheck that, that checkbox, click OK, I turn speech mode back on, speech mode talk. and I toggle between the modes. Focus mode. Blast mode. Focus mode. Blast mode. Speech mode off. All right, so for me as a new user, that's going to be a lot more understandable. The other thing that you get by changing that setting is when you open up speech mode, and I'll show you how to do this quickly, um, I'm sorry, speech viewer, and I used a very rapid keyboard shortcut to do that, which I'll show you in a moment. You'll notice that when we come back to the page beneath and toggle between the modes, focus and browse modes are displayed in the speech viewer. If we leave that setting that we untoggled toggled on, we don't see that. The audio indication is all we get. So by turning the audio indication off, we get focus and browse modes being spoken to us by the screen reader and focus and browse mode being displayed in the speech viewer. So I highly recommend toggling off that setting for audio indication of browse modes. Okay, so returning to that keyboard shortcut that I mentioned that I used to open Speech Viewer very quickly. Caps Lock is now our NVDA key, if you recall. So Caps Lock plus Spacebar is what we use to toggle between Focus and Browse modes. There are other NVDA key combinations we can use that are very helpful. One of those is Caps Lock plus N, N for NVDA, of course. If you hit Caps Lock plus N, you produce the same context menu that you would that you would get by right clicking on the system tray icon for NVDA. So this is a very quick way to get to lots of NVDA's preferences and tools. One of those tools, remember, is Speech Viewer. So by pressing Caps Lock N, I get the context menu, then I can press T for Tools and S for Speech Viewer. So with the, those three keystrokes, I can very rapidly um, produce and dismiss the Speech Viewer. So now that I have the Speech Viewer, and I'm navigating around the page, and I want to close the speech viewer for whatever reason. Again, caps lock N, T, S, and the speech viewer is gone. All right, so now for the fun part. We're going to put together everything we've discussed and actually put it into practice to fix an accessibility issue and to validate that our fix is working as intended. So we're looking here at the Lorem Ipsum page, our example page. And if you remember in some of the previous examples, I actually used NVDA to navigate this page heading by heading. And when I did so, Lorem Ipsum Dolo and Sed Cursus Ante, these pieces of text actually appeared as headings. So I, what I've done since then is actually change that. I've broken it. I've gone into the code pen that's generating that view and I've converted them into divs. So those what were headings at one point are actually just divs now with a class of H2, and that class is simply being used to add some bold font weight to those elements and make them sort of appear as headings, but they're not actually semantically identified as headings anymore. So that has implications for accessibility and for screen readers. 
those pieces of text now, since they're not semantically identified as headings, screen readers don't recognize them as such. And that's a problem because each of those pieces of content really is functioning as a heading on this page to help organize the information. So they need to be identified as headings in such a way that a screen reader recognizes them. Okay, so those two pieces of text content are not identified as headings. What does that mean from a screen reader user's perspective? Well, let's take a look. We'll open up our speech viewer. We'll move it off to the side, resize it so we can see what we're doing, and then we'll navigate the page in browse mode from the top. So the first thing we see is heading level one, lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum is identified as a heading, and we know that it's level one. I press down in browse mode to navigate to the next piece of content. I hit lorem ipsum dolo. Now, that's all I get. I just get the text content. I don't see that this is a heading of any kind. In fact, for all intents and purposes, the screen reader treats it just like it does this paragraph text below. It's just text content. So that's what we're up against. So let's dismiss our speech viewer. So as a developer, how am I to know what to do to fix this problem? At DQ, we've discovered that there's a particular way in which we can deliver accessibility issues as we've identified them to development teams so that the development teams can easily understand what it is they need to do to fix them and how to validate those issues are fixed. And it looks something like this. This is something I'll talk more about in a future article. Uh, but for right now, what we're really concerned about is the fact that it has two sections, one called remediation and one called success criteria. So as a developer, I first need to know what it, is, what it is that I need to do in order to fix the problem. And here are those instructions. They're very um, simple in this, in this case. Add a role heading attribute to the development and add an ARIA level 2 attribute to the development. So let's do that. Let's go to the code pen. Let's make those changes. And let's save those changes. So now we reload the view. All we've done is change some attributes so nothing visually changes for us. Uh, but let's go back to the issue. We've made those changes. Now how do I even know what to do as a developer who's new to using a screen reader? Um, how do I know what to do to validate that I've fixed it correctly? Well, let's go to the issue. The success criteria tells us what we need to do. So given I am using NVDA in Firefox, which I am, and remember, we always encourage using NVDA in the Firefox browser because it has Firefox has the best support for NVDA. And given NVDA is in browse mode, okay, we can we can remember to do that. When I hit H and Shift H to navigate among the headings on the page, then lorem ipsum dolo and said cursus ante are listed among the available headings. So let's try that. We're back on the page. We're going to open the speech viewer once again and move it off to the side so we can see. Then from the top of the page, remember given we're using NVDA in Firefox and NVDA is in browse mode, so let's just verify that we're in browse mode. We'll hit caps lock plus spacebar a couple times to make sure. See the speech viewer is telling us focus mode, browse mode, so we're in browse mode now. And I hit H to navigate among the headings on the page. So I'm going to hit H once more. I hit H once more, no next heading. So I start hitting shift H to go backward. And you see, it's actually stopping at each of those pieces of text content we're concerned with. Lorem ipsum dolo and said cursusante. Yes, so they are listed among the available headings. Let's go back to the success criteria. And we'll see the last couple lines say, and when I navigate to each of the headings listed above, I hear that it is a level 2 heading. So let's try that as well. So we're navigating, remember this page in browse mode, using H and Shift H to navigate from heading to heading. And there we are on the first of the two. It says lorem ipsum dolo heading level two. We'll hit H once to go to the next one, said cursus ante heading level two. So using the instructions provided in the success criteria here, we're able to actually follow those instructions having some basic knowledge about how to use NVDA to validate that we have fixed that accessibility issue in the correct way and we're sure of that. So to recap, in this video tutorial we've discussed downloading and installing NVDA. We've pre presented some reasons why NVDA is a good platform for performing screen reader testing as a developer. We've discussed some methods of modifying the configuration of NVDA 
to make things a little bit easier for us as developers. Things like changing the NVDA modifier key from insert to caps lock, opening and closing the speech viewer quickly, disabling the beep and boop audio indicators for focus and browse modes and instead having those modes displayed to us in the speech viewer, and installing an add-on called focus highlight which helps us to visualize where we are currently navigating within the document.